Kelly is Chief Investment Officer, International and Global Equities and Aerial Investments. We also have Ed Yardini, President at Yardini Research, joining in now uh, to take some questions. Uh, uh, good, good to have uh, both of you here. Thanks very much uh, for your time. Rupert, if I can uh, start by asking you two questions. One, uh, the announcement of the U.S. government to step in to protect depositors, will, is that enough? Will we see more in terms of uh, contagion spillover or is this now contained? And second, will this force the Fed to back off from their rate hiking program? Go on. Uh, so first, I think the contagion certainly has been contained, uh, but I think regulations will increase on the regional banks. One of the exceptional attributes of the U.S. banking system is that the regional banks did not have to adopt Basel III. While European banks and most international banks have adopted Basel III, which requires them to have a net stable funding ratio. That was the crux of the issue that Signature Bank and SVB faced, and that's why they had to be bailed out. So I think the contagion has been contained with the announcement of the depositor uh, backstop uh, that we all just heard about. That said, don't forget equity investors got wiped out and bondholders are going to take some losses. So there will be some fallout on the markets and risk assets will get repriced, as they should. Okay, to your question on whether the Fed is going to pause sure. uh, based on this development, I don't think so. I think inflation uh, and the economy are more their concerns. Uh, this bailout uh, is rather limited in scope uh, and has been dealt with rather quickly. So I'm hopeful that the Fed keeps eyes on their mission, which is bringing inflation down. Okay. Got it. So you're saying that the contagion will be contained, but there will be some fallout on, uh, you know, risky assets like equities because of the losses that bondholders have to face. Uh, Ed Yardini is also with us. Mr. Yardini, your thoughts. Is there any kind of systemic risk to the global financial markets because of what transpired in the last 48 hours? Yeah, the problem with the financial stability is we did never really have a full understanding of uh, how unstable it is until something blows up. Uh, I think that the SVB example uh, reminds us that uh, a lot of deposits are not insured by the FDIC, and that's uh, that's the problem. That's uh, I think a lot of depositors, big depositors, certainly forgot that uh, when they were dealing with SVB, and so the Fed did have to come in and provide this uh, backstop, uh, this support. Uh, but the problem is still out there. I mean. It's conceivable that we would have another run on another bank, but I think to the extent that the Fed and the FDIC just managed uh, to provide this uh, backstop, I think there's now an implicit uh, perception that any other big bank that has this problem uh, will be bailed out after they fire the management and after they wipe out the uh, investors. So they, things have changed, but uh, I agree that the regulatory environment in and the regional banks needs to be tightened up. Okay, got that. Uh, the thing is, we keep getting new terms. Every time there's a new crisis or a new failure, this time we have what's called a new bank term funding program, uh, which is sort of, uh, it's supposed to provide immediate liquidity to any institution affected by these bailouts. So we, they're technical terms. We just don't know. <laughs> right now we're being told that taxpayer dollars are not being used for this. But, Smith, but Mr. Yardini, I think the market will have uh, the central question on its mind that does it end with Signature Bank and with SVB or could there be more? Uh, what's your sense? It really could be more and that'll be the, the concern. Uh, but uh, I think the Federal Reserve is going to uh, be a, somewhat less aggressive here and it's uh, tightening. Remember, they... They wanted to get the Fed funds rate to a restrictive level, uh, not one that kills the economy, not one that destroys the banking system. They wanted to get it up to a restrictive level and then keep it there. I think they're pretty close. I mean, I suppose just uh, for them to show that they aren't too concerned about financial stability, they might go for 25 basis points. I highly doubt they'll go to fit for 50 basis points. Uh, then again, uh, they know more than we know, and it uh, may be that They've concluded that no increase uh, is uh, justified, and they'll say, you know, we're, until things calm down and we sort them out, uh, we're going to uh, leave uh, the Fed funds rate where it is. But uh, again, 25 basis points more isn't going to make a big difference. Uh, uh, we still have an inverted yield curve, which uh, in some ways is uh, a, a, a trouble 
for the banks because it means that people can leave deposits and get better returns in treasuries. And once people figure that out, uh, if you have more of them doing it, it could really be a real problem for the banks and the Fed. The Fed knows that. Uh, you know, by the way, in the last five minutes or six minutes, the dollar index has sold off aggressively. I mean, uh, you rarely see, uh, you know, a broader dollar gauge move like this, but it is. If we, I don't know if we can pull this up, pull, pull this up. Uh, uh, we were at, when we started, right? I mean, we were at about 104.3, 104.4. Mm -hmm. It's still there. Maybe we can refresh it. Uh, what I'm seeing is about 103.89 uh, in the last five or uh, 10 minutes or so of trade. We'll uh, reflect that. But this is a large reaction coming through. Uh, Rupal, uh, and this may have to do with the fact that, of course, I mean, uh, the policy measures, which we heard, but uh, uh, Goldman Sachs, right, one of the biggest uh, investment banks, uh, saying that they've removed their call for a 25 basis point hike on the 22nd of March. They say the Fed won't do it. <clears throat> uh, so I don't know if you, uh, if you want to react. You've already said you don't think it'll uh, get the Fed off the inflation fighting track, but maybe uh, for the next meeting, uh, they may back off. Possible? Sure, look, but I think that's a very short-term uh, sort of point of view uh, because mm -hmm. ultimately markets discount, you know, the long-term future, not just a couple of weeks or months ahead. Uh, and I think the, the thing to watch out for is, you know, are rates in positive territory or mm -hmm. are real rates in negative territory? We are still squarely in negative territory. So either inflation comes down or rates continue to go up. That's the mm. challenge. So I think it's much more to do with what is going to happen to inflation, not what's going to happen to SVB Bank or Signature Bank or uh, you know other sort of asset classes and moves, including the currency. It's it's really our take and view on inflation. Uh, and frankly, living in the U.S. Uh, and I understand it's anecdotal, uh, but nonetheless, uh, it does not feel like inflation is coming off a boil. And I think that's problematic for markets. They have viewed the glass as half full. I would argue it could well be half empty, which is that rates stay higher for longer, which is, in my opinion, the way Powell and other Fed board members are trying to broadcast their views and the market refuses to listen. Uh, Rupal, I remember when you were here in Mumbai in our studio, right, you were having this chat about how it's perhaps not a good time to be in risky assets like equities this year and it's just showing up through the course of the year. Uh, is that your stance even now, that even if this situation gets resolved, of course, now there is a backstop that has been provided for uh, depositors, etc. But who is to say that, you know, some more of these, um, uh, some more of these situations don't arise through the course of the year? What do you do with risky assets like equities? Do you, are you cautious now? Would you raise cash levels, especially uh, for emerging markets like India? Well, two things. Look, uh, cash uh, has become a genuine alternative to all other asset classes because it is yielding a very high rate of return in the short run. So I think Tina, which was there is no alternative, has turned into Tian. There is an alternative now, and it's really called fixed income. The second point is any asset class that is exposed to high levels of leverage risk and liquidity risk uh, are going to be vulnerable in a world of QT. So I don't think we should rush for the exits from equity markets and put all the money under a mattress or, frankly, in a bank and, and get some interest on it. I think it's about curating your portfolio to be cash flow generative as opposed to cash burning. And the biggest way in which cash flows come back to shareholders is through dividends. So I recommended before, and I continue to believe, that a high dividend yielding strategy uh, is the way to approach equity investing. Dividends have tended to account for half the total return of the long-run stock market's performance, you know, that we all count on. In the last decade, it has predominantly come from capital appreciation. I think in the next decade, it comes from dividends. So it's about repositioning portfolios uh, with an eye towards defensiveness and dividends, not giving up. Okay, got that, Rupal. Uh, Mr. Yadini, I remember in 2008, we spent many months debating uh, this whole decoupling theory. Now, we're nowhere close to 2008, and I hope we don't get there. Uh, but what is your sense? Till the U.S. sorts itself out, whether it's the real economy or recession, rates, or some of these financial institutions, will money keep flowing to EMs? How, how would you look at a market like India, for instance, uh, against this backdrop? I, I think that, uh, obviously, there are global investors that... Uh, diversify around the world. And I think uh, many of them are starting to conclude that uh, India may be the beneficiary of some of the geopolitical changes going on. 
And I think they will probably overweight India relative to some other markets like China, for example, which has already had a, a big rally, but uh, presents all sorts of geopolitical challenges. Uh, then there's the issue of the dollar. And uh, I think that a weaker dollar is clearly good for emerging markets. And we may see that because of this SVB situation, the Fed is less aggressive from here. They tone down their hawkishness and the dollar weakens somewhat. And that should be good for emerging markets. All right. Uh... Ed and Rupal, thank you so much for joining us and giving us an update on how you would approach this entire crisis. So for now, things are contained. The fire has been doused by the U.S. government, at least at the moment. Uh, but let's see how things transpire from here. There are definitely uh, losses in the bond market that one would have to react to. But uh, let's do one thing. Let us, we'll be getting you a lot of opinion through the course of the day. So let's, do a, uh, let's take a quick break for now. On the other side of the break, we also have a stock market to trade this morning. Plenty of stocks to watch out for. We'll be back in just minutes from now.